Welcome to Wealth and Wellness with Grace Nabasabla. Hi, welcome. This is Grace and today I'm bringing you ways you can become an efficient communicator. You've heard communication is actually the foundation of any and every relationship. And this can be a family relationship, an acquaintance, right? Strangers, just relationships anywhere in general. So think about these ways you can become a better communicator or a more efficient communicator. And I'll start with a DISC assessment. DISC is actually an acronym. D is a director. I is an influencer. S is a supporter. And C, C is cautious. So these are personality styles. They have so many personality assessments out there. However, these personality styles help us understand ourselves and also understand others. And the more we understand ourselves, we realize how we can communicate with others because we all don't communicate the same, right? So after doing the DISC assessment, I realized I was an I and S, right? I'm fun, I'm influential. Um, supporting and also with the S we like to volunteer right so we are stabilizing everything and we like calm however the D and C for the D's they are very decisive they are the decision makers right they like everything to start and literally stop with them I was talking to my assistant and she was telling me one of her classmates is actually a D as much as this is a group project he goes behind her and changes everything that she actually did, right? So she was getting really frustrated. And I had to remind her that guess what? Maybe this is his personality style. He wants to start, right? And end everything. So I was trying to make her understand that guess what? You have to understand how to communicate with that type of personality. Because he would assign them projects this is a group project. He assigned himself a leader and he would put initials on all the work that they all had to do. And then after they do the work, he would literally go in there, change everything they did. So he wanted them to contribute, but he didn't want them to contribute at the same time. So he can get frustrated. I was thinking about how much frustrated she was. So before you get frustrated like that, just understand that not every personality style is your style and understand how you can communicate with them. And for the C, C's are very cautious. Also C's don't like risks. So for C's, they would conflict with me, but I take risks and I'm okay with risks. C's, they like everything to be perfect, right? So they will analyze it and tell you how you shouldn't do this and this and this and that. However, in all relationships, we need all these personality styles. We need the dominant, right? We need the influencer, we need the supporter, as well as somebody who's cautious. And what frustrates us is not knowing how to communicate. I can share one of the things that just came up recently in my life. Us as parents, sometimes we don't really know how to even communicate with our kids, right? And better yet, if our kids don't communicate with us, we don't know how to communicate with the other parents. So we had this scripture and something was going on at my kid's school and one of the parents mentioned, none of you are good parents, <laughs> right? None of you are good parents because you should have known this and this and this is happening in your child's life. We are talking about teenagers here. You do, have you dealt with a teenager before? Because if you have, you understand some challenges, right? Because my child, sometimes she can eliminate what she tells me. And I have to really dig it down and ask her like, really what happened, tell me more. You see, and she was able to tell me what was going on. But this parent was literally judging all of us. And in fact, my daughter was like, you know what, mama? Ask her to come to Toastmasters. <laughs> because, 
because before you judge anybody out there, you need to think about yourself. Because you calling us probably not good enough parents or calling each other out, it's not necessary. We have to be better communicators and better yet communicate better with our kids, right? And that also goes for marriages. We've heard about love languages, right? How you need to learn how you can understand your spouse's love language so you can understand how to communicate with them. Because one spouse's communication is not going to be the other's. And sometimes we think that we communicate the same in that you might communicate your love language to your partner thinking, okay, they will accept it. This is what they need, right? No. They will not receive that communication and won't receive that love until you actually translate that love language into what they can understand, right? So understanding how we can channel our love languages to be able to understand other people and communicate it in a way that they actually can understand is a big thing. And that's what actually can help save relationships. So I'm hoping this can help you. Anybody out there, it can be a business venture you're going through and you have all these people on the team that you need to be able to understand. These communication styles can help you. Because think about it. Communication is not for us. It's for them. Because if somebody doesn't understand your communication, you're not a communicator. Because communication needs to be translated into what the other person understands. Right? We can agree to disagree. But if I communicate with you and you don't understand me, I haven't done my job as a communicator. And it's my job to actually make that message understandable enough for you to be able to receive it in the way I want you to receive it. So it's the how, right? Not less of the what, right? What you say is not as important as how much and how you say it. So I'm hoping this message actually translates well with anybody else watching. And until next time, think about the platinum roll. And you may ask, what is the platinum roll? It's doing unto others as they would want to be done to them. So until next time, have a great one.